Well, good morning, everybody. And this is uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving. So today is our Thanksgiving service. We're also celebrating Toten Fest, which is a day of remembrance as we remember those who have passed away in the past year in our families and especially in our church. Normally we do Toten Fest on All Saints Sunday at the beginning of November. However, so much was going on that day, we decided to postpone it. So here we are gathered together in our homes or wherever we are, but we are gathered together in the Spirit of God, and so I invite you to join us in worship. could be resentful, we come to give thanks. Though we could be complaining, we come to offer appreciation. Though we could be upset about what we lack, we come in gratitude for what we have. We enter now into this time of worship, carrying seed to sow, singing songs of joy, rejoicing together. And our gathering prayer, God of life and love, we rejoice in your abundant gifts. God of all peoples and all places, we celebrate your generosity and grace. God of the earth and the heavens, we praise you for provision. You visit the earth and water, it softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys from your lofty abode. You water the mountains. God of life and love, we bless your holy name. Amen. Our epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart 
will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ, fills everything in every way. Today's gospel reading again is coming from Matthew, this time from chapter six. It's about worry. So Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you will drink or what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into their barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add one single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the oven, won't God do much more for you, O oh, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sick. 
I have to, class, I have to um, confess to you that as a child I was a classic worry wart. They even called me the worry wart. I was uh, anxious about anything that I was unsure of. When we were on a road trip, I would ask, Daddy, are we going to have enough gasoline to get there? And then when I got to the dinner table, I had a ravenous appetite, but I would eat so fast, my father would say, slow down. Are you afraid the pigs are going to get to it before you do? Well, as a matter of fact, I was. You see, some people are chronic worriers. Mark Twain was one of them. He said, I'm an old man and have known a great many troubles but most of them never happened. And it's true. What I worry about the most is not usually what happens. It's something totally unexpected. And Mark Twain also said, worrying is like paying a debt that you don't owe. Anxiety is a part of every human condition. It's a trait that we share with other animals. Anxiety. Worry grows out of the fight-or-flight response. When we are faced with a danger, such as meeting a bear in the woods, everything in our bodies kicks in, the adrenaline pumps up, the heart rate goes up, respiration goes up, <clears throat> we stop digesting food, we're poised and ready for action. We either have to fight or flee. Well, that's fine in those situations, but we've created a society in which many of us seem to be anxious all the time. We're always aroused, and that's called the general act adaptation syndrome. Gas, that's for short. Gas imperils our mental health because we're always wound up. It makes us less efficient. It can harm our bodies physically and it can harm our relationships. So the antidote, don't worry. Be happy. There were warriors in ancient times as well as ours. Well, King Saul brooded so much over what his future might be that it drove him mentally ill, and that's when David came in and played for him and sang songs. Jesus addressed this, of course, in the Sermon on the Mount, which we just read this morning. And he says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than the clothes? Worrying does not add a moment of time to our lives but it can shorten our lifespans. So then how do we vanquish worrying and fretting? It's, 
ain't easy, it ain't easy. But with practice, we can overcome it, we can control it. We can be happier and more peaceful. So here are a few little tidbits to, to think about. Practice these and you'll be amazed at what it can do to help your frame of mind. First of all, stop overthinking. That's where we get in trouble. We begin to think about something and then the mind runs loose like a wild beast stampeding through the forest. Instead, practice being mindful of the present. Be here now. Not in your head, but now. You see, we don't live in the future. The future isn't real. The past isn't even real except memories. What's real is now, here. Be aware of each passing moment. Because you see, that is living in the present. That is the eternal now. That is Kairos. That is God's time. So yes, we want to plan ahead, but we need to avoid falling into the what ifs. You know, most of the what ifs that we might imagine, as Mark Twain said, they'll never actually happen. So what to do then? Count your blessings. We talked about that last week. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. There are some other specific things that we can do to shift from a state of anxiety to finding peace. One of them is what Paul called continuous prayer, to pray continually. That doesn't mean you have to go around talking to yourself or to God out loud. It just means that we keep an awareness of the presence of God in our lives. And when we forget it, we bring ourselves back to remember. Jesus said of anxiety, instead of being anxious, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. God knows what we need, even if sometimes what we need is not what we want. There are some mental exercises that can change our attitude towards things. Don't make mountains out of molehills. As Mark Twain observed, most of what we're worrying about doesn't happen. Avoid mind reading. You may think people are, are, are making a judgment about you or thinking about something, but you don't know what they're thinking. You just make it up. Mind your what-ifs and practice some form of meditation, daily if possible. Even at 10, 15, 20 minutes, just find a quiet, still place and allow your mind to relax and become empty and focus on God. At first, it might be a little difficult because your mind's going to go scrambling all over the place like a monkey. It's what the Buddhists call monkey mind. But if we're still and quiet, we learn that it's easier over time to become even quieter. And you know what? If you do these things, you will be amazed at what God has done. Amen. So as we come now to um, a time in which we normally would take our morning offering, let's just take stock of the many blessings we do have and the abundance we have. And imagine how can we share that abundance? How can we share an abundance of love? How can we share an abundance of money? How can we share an abundance of the talents God has given us? How do we give that back to God through the church and in our private lives. That is what we offer God. 
And so I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, you have given us everything. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you for the flowers that bloom. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. So now we are going to come to that part of the service where we remember those whom we have loved and who have passed on in this past year. So as we begin our prayers of remembrance and thanksgiving, I invite you at your home where you are to join in this prayer. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, May we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. So as I read each person's name, a candle will be lit. And if you have a candle at home for one of your loved ones, whether they are in this names list or not, you are invited to light that candle. With each name you will respond, I hope, with these words. With thankful hearts we remember, and then say the name. Carolyn S. Gordon, born November 16, 1941, died January 18, 2020. Virginia Ginny Fazari, July 12, 1930 to February 1, 2020. Linda Metcalf, born June 14, 1941, passed from this world February 18, 2020. And our dear interim minister, Reverend Dr. David Beebe, born September 7, 1931, and after a life full of service, passed away on March 4, 2020. Francis A. Nuremberger, August 16, 1930, April 8, 2020. Edgar Cayley, July 20, 1927, to April 8, 2020. James Beckman, Sr., born July 14, 1946, and died on July 25th, 2020. Peggy A. Liebhart, November 25th, 1938, to July 31st, 2020. Shirley Husky, came into this world on August 28th, 1942, and left for further shores on August 21st, 2020. Evelyn Baker, April 21st, 1938 to October 6, 2020. Kathleen Kathy Quartermus, born August 7, 1956, died October 8, 2020. Herbert Showy, born May 9, 1931 and left this world on October 25th, 2020. And Marvelous Templer, who was born on July 9th, 1947, and died on November 3rd, 2020. Let us pray together. Lord of creation, you set your divine spark in flesh, and we become living mortals. When our lives have been run, the body withers, but your spark of life is eternal. 
We give thanks for those whom we have loved and who are now gone from us, but not from you. May your light ever shine within them, and may our hearts be warmed by our memories. We pray in the name of Christ, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The announcements for this morning and the coming week will have been sent to you via email or um, by going on to the zionunion.org website. But here are a couple of things that I especially want to lift up for you in prayer. And, and one of them is that we want to extend our um, sympathy to Bonnie Vermeer and family on the death of her mother, Mary Hart, who died on November 10th and to Matthew Copeland and family on the death of his grandmother, Carmen Copeland, who died on November 17th. So join us this morning, if you can, between 10 and 11 a.m. as we prepare to celebrate Advent with a special drive-through event for our health department and the Union Food Pantry. Details of items needed are in the November newsletter. And children and their families will receive a special gift during the drive through Also, final articles for the December newsletter are due in the church office by tomorrow morning. The newsletter will be assembled on Wednesday, November 25th. And Rama and I are going to take a few days off next week to celebrate our 29th wedding anniversary, um, so we'll be, we'll be gone from about Tuesday until uh, coming back on Saturday, and then we go into Advent, a whole new season, as the church calendar begins anew. Bless us all, and watch over and keep us in the palm of his hands. May Christ walk with us, guiding us, his hand on our shoulders. May the Holy Spirit illuminate the path before us, that we may see clearly where we are to go, and may we be blessed by the love that surrounds us and fills us. 
Amen.